Hey guys, this uh, tutorial is for Canon users uh, only because I'll be looking at Canon RAW files inside of DaVinci Resolve. Now this is not the Canon RAW files that you would be getting out of say your R5. This is the Canon RAW files that are coming in as stills images. So there is a massive benefit if you're going to do time lapses or hyperlapses or stop motion with your Canon cameras because DaVinci Resolve can read those stills as native RAW files in Resolve. And I'm going to show you how much you can play around with them. So let's get into it. Now, the reason why I'm making this video is because there's something that's very interesting about the Canon RAW files in stills images, in still sequences. So stills images in still sequences, Resolve actually reads them as a video file, as a RAW video file. So if you're going to do anything like hyperlapses, time lapses, or stop motion animation, there's probably some other things that you could be doing with still sequences I mean, you could probably shoot 20 frames per second with the R5 in RAW continuously to a CF Express card for as long as it'll let you do it uh, and, and set your time base in your project at 20 frames per second and you would have a 47 megapixel video file uh, with, with, and here is the big with, 16-bit color. So it'd be 16-bit, not going out to an external recorder. It wouldn't be being down sampled by an Atomos Ninja 5 to 12 bit. You have complete 16 bit control if you're using RAW for animation. Now, people might be saying, oh, wow, those files are huge. Yeah, they are huge. Now, because I've got my R5 in this shot, this file was actually shot with a 5D Mark II. And you can see it's like 5.6K. Uh, so it's not quite 8K, but it's 5.6K. Now, if I grab that shot and put it into, say, a 1080 timeline, uh, okay, so my timeline's actually at 3840, so let's see how that goes. So it's going to downsample 5.5K to 3.8K. Uh, let's jump into our edit window. Let's go to our media pool. Let's grab our clip. And this is why I love, absolutely love uh, Canon RAW files. Now, I'm on an old laptop. This is raw and I'm getting 24 frames per second playback. 24 frames per second, real time playback. I can edit this in real time. And if I want to get even better real time performance, I can go to my uh, playback. I can go to proxy mode because proxy is turned off. So I can go to half resolution. I can go to render cache, go to smart. And now it's gone red. And it's going to render it. That's why it's playing a little bit crappy. So if I wanted to just loop it so it would render faster, I can just go to my grading window, go on loop mode and play it, and then it'll just render it out. And there we go. We've got full playback. Once it's generated the media, it's not a problem. Now, obviously, this takes up a little bit of additional disk space. But for me, that's a workable trade-off. Uh, this footage is straight out of camera, not graded. It looks fantastic. It is tack sharp. You are not going <laughs> to be running around going, oh, this camera is sharper than that camera, blah, blah, blah. This is a 12-year-old camera. The R5 totally smokes an EOS R, and it smokes a, um old 5D Mark II in terms of resolution, sharpness, and color fidelity. It's 100% raw. It's 16-bit at a 24 base frame rate and I can get real time playback, not a problem at all, which means that I can create a project like the animation which I'll have in the somewhere on the screen that you can go look at. I can make a project like that really, really quickly. So that's what I find really, really cool. Now, if you go into the color page, you can see this is ungraded. This is straight out of camera. You know, I've got huge flexibility in terms of what I can do with it. So if I go up into the inspector, if I just start blowing this up, you can see how much resolution is in that shot. Like it's crazy the amount of resolution. I mean, yeah, it's 6K, it's 6K, you know, uh, it's a lot of resolution in terms of, uh, in terms of a video file, but 
it's there and it's all usable. So resizing without super scaling is super easy because I'm downscaling into 4K. And now one of the other benefits is if I go over to the color window, I now have all of that information in 16 bit in 16 bit to just start playing around with it. I've just got massive amounts of room to move <laughs> to just move it around. It, there's just so much flexibility with 16 bit. Now I can get even more uh, out of the dynamic float system in Resolve. If I wanted to grade this in Fusion, I could <laughs> I could take it to Fusion and I could grade it there. Hopefully, mate, I didn't bore you too much about working with Canon RAW files, but I hope from that you can see the huge benefit, the huge benefit for product shots. Like everyone's just doing them quick. Everyone's just doing them quick with their video camera, well, with their hybrid camera, when you can actually shoot stills sequences like a time lapse, which is basically stop motion, on your same devices that you might be using, and you're going to get vastly better, better videos as an end result. So hopefully this quick tip has given you some ideas and if it has and you go away and shoot some stuff i'd love to see it i really would so drop a comment down below if you've got anything that you'd like to show me and uh, we can chat about it but until then hope you stay well see you later guys bye for now For this moment, the final battle of the chosen. See, I'm never gonna quit. Got my legacy set in motion. So what?